Okay, so I start right away. Uh, I want to tell you today about validator effects with the tagline form validation made easy. My name is Robert Lichtenberg. I work for Synedra Information Technologies. We um, produce software for hospitals and for, um, for other medical institutions. Um, so what uh, Johan Foss earlier said, we are one of those companies that totally use everything from the JavaFX ecosystems and are really, really happy about it. Uh, so we try to contribute in several ways. One of them is we actually have bought licenses from Gluon and I recommend that every uh, company that pro profits from the JavaFX ecosystem does so as well, because as Johan said, it's really tough work uh, uh, doing all those stuff on, on the bottom layer that nobody ever sees, but it's really important to have this ecosystem around. The other thing is that I try to contribute one uh, or half a bug fix every JavaFX release. I did that, I think with JavaFX 13 or 14, I contributed one or two very, very minor fixes, but I try to do that on a more regular basis. And the third one was that uh, since last year, I was asked about validation in forms and that there were several people that said they also had problems with that. So uh, I said, uh, well, I'll try to come up with a solution and, and try to put it uh, online so that it's open source. And that's what validator effects is about. What's the motivation behind validator effects? As you may know, controls effects already contains a, a validation uh, system. Um, but it has a few drawbacks that, that made it difficult for us to use. And first and foremost was the controls effects only allows you to validate one control. It has to be a control uh, and it only has, and it, and it can only validate the content of this one control. So if you look at the screenshot here, we have a, a password field and a confirmation field for the password. If those two don't match, like you can see in that screenshot here, then uh, both of these fields should be highlighted and should be uh, uh, displayed to the user as, hey, these, don't, these, these two don't match, you have to do something. And that's something that's really not possible with controls effects because controls effects only allows you to validate one control um, in itself. So another motivation was that uh, the target, as I told you, it has to be a control with controls effects. And uh, I wanted to validate any nodes. My concrete case was the rich text FX. I don't know uh, if you know that. It's a, it's a really nice uh, library that allows you to have uh, colorful text like rich text. Uh, um, and that is no longer a subclass of control. It used to be a subclass of control back in 1918 or something like that, uh, 2018 or something like that, but it's no longer the case. Uh, and so it could not be uh, um, combined with the validation. So other nodes like canvases, et cetera, should be validatable too. And uh, there were also some troubles with internal API. Controls FX uses uh, internal API from JavaFX. Uh, like it, it, it opens up uh, some methods which are protected and that kind of stuff. And uh, this requires you to explicitly work around the Java module system restrictions that are now in place. So um, that was another, uh, a nail in the coffin that made me abandon controls effects validation at that point. And the first point I already mentioned, there were people at the JFX days in 2019 who told me, yeah, that would really be interesting. We would like to use that. Interestingly, I've never heard from those people again. So either um, they all use uh, <laughs> validator effects by now, or they just didn't uh, uh, find out that I released that stuff. So that's why I'm uh, giving you I was, I was just waiting for this presentation, okay, to get uh, a... Ah, to get started. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, really, thanks. Really use it, for sure. Okay, so let's just jump right into the code. Here is a minimal example. We have this central validator object, which we create a check on. Then we say it's a, it's a fluent API, as you can see, then we say uh, it depends on some property, which we give a name, like a username. Uh, and as you can see, you have uh, any property here. So anything that is observable can be used here. Then we have the central check method and this check method gets a context like this is this little C here. And then I can get from this context, the actual value, the current value of the property of the main property here. And here I do the check if the username is not all lowercase letters, then I say, okay, that's an error. Please use only lowercase letters. It's a bit stupid really to only use lowercase letters for your Username, but here we go. If I don't want this to be an error, if I just say, well, this is not ideal, so I give out a warning, then I can call c.warn at this place. 
And next up, I can say uh, this validation, this check will decorate a certain field. This is like a regular user text field. And I also say that this is immediate, which means that anytime the user text field text property changes, the uh, validation will be rechecked and the, the validation will be shown or hidden as requested. So next up's uh, a little uh, example that shows multiple calls to Fluent APIs. I showed you the, the password example, and this is the exact code for this password checking example. Here I have the with method put on top. So if the password is not the same as the password confirmation, I give out an error, passwords do not match. And I tell that this is depending on the password text property and also on the password confirmation text property. So I can add as many properties as I want here. And I can also call decorates as often as I want. So it really decorates the password field and the password confirmation field. And again, I tell that this is to be executed immediately. Next, how can we access validation results? Because uh, sometimes you not only want to draw little uh, icons on, uh, on a button or on an on a, on a, uh, input field, but you want to give out what's wrong somewhere. So this two lines above here show a button which is whose disabled property is bound to the validate that contains errors property. So this is a Boolean property that tells me if anything went wrong within this validation, within this validator. So a validator can contain many checks. And if one of these checks contains an error, then this property will be turned, uh, will, be, will be set to true. And then it will disable the sign up button. If you look on the lower right, you see like this would look like, so the button is disabled and there is this uh, yellow triangle to tell you that there's something wrong here. And another little piece of code is uh, if I have a text area, which is uh, read only, and I create a, a string binding, which contains the problem text, and uh, which again, is, this is a, a regular JavaFX string binding, which is uh, depending on the validator validation result property, then uh, the problem text can be retrieved by iterating over the, all the messages in the validation result property and mapping them with like uh, something like the severity and the colon and the actual text. And finally, we collect this with, uh, with a joining collector that puts line breaks between the, the separate results. And this gives us this little thing that you see here. We have uh, like two errors and one warning and they're all uh, put together in a text area. So this is the way we can really pretty easily access the results of a, a form validation. Uh, one more thing that I like to uh, tell everyone is, please do not just disable a button or a menu entry without, the, uh, without telling the user why this is the case. I mean, there are cases that are obvious, but there are other cases that might not be so obvious. And so usually you should display some kind of tooltip or something like that to tell the user, hey, this is the reason why you can't access this functionality because it's very frustrating if you want to hit that button and it's just disabled and not telling you why. So we can create custom decorations. Um, this is uh, basically like um, if we don't want to use one of the pre-made uh, decoration patterns, we have one that uses CSS styles and another one that uses the graphic decorations then we can easily say decorating with and can provide a decoration factory method here like this. And uh, this has to return a decoration. This is a very simple interface which just has the two methods add and remove from the target node. So the target node is the node that should be decorated, that should be, um, uh, that should be yeah, augmented with, a, with an additional uh, uh, node or something. And here I have uh, created a special decorator that just sets a text like okay, or sets an, an, another text like error if, if there, there is something wrong. And on the top, we have this example. We have uh, two summoned text fields and the sum text field, and finally a check label. And with this sum decorator, we have now the possibility of if, if the two uh, summons sum up to the correct value on the right, then it says okay. And if we have a, an error in our calculation, it just says error sum should be 21. Of course, there should be uh, more useful real world examples, but that shows you how to go for your own custom decoration. So um, 
how can you set the default uh, built-in decoration? So if you don't want to call decorating with every time, you obviously have to use uh, some uh, default decorations. And that is what we're doing here. The default decoration class contains ready-made decoration factories like create style class decoration or create graphic decoration. As I said earlier, the style class decoration will set a certain style class for warning or error. And the graphic decoration will have those little nice yellow triangles or, or, or red ones, uh, depending on if you have issued warning or error. And there is a method to set the default uh, decoration. So if you have uh, um, its default decoration set factory, and like th this call would set the style class decoration as the default. And of course you can use your own factory method here so that if you have a fancy little decoration scheme, then you can use it throughout your application with just this one initialization call. Uh, a small look behind the scene for graphic decoration because that's the only part I consider non-trivial. Um, it's pretty difficult to add something to an unknown scene. Setting a, a CSS is pretty easy. So the CSS uh, decoration is pretty easy to do. Um, but adding something to an unknown scene is pretty difficult. So what I am doing with uh, validator effects is I add a graphic decoration stack pane as the root of the scene. The scene may not be there yet. Then we use a listener to wait for the scene and add the graphic decoration stack pane as soon as it becomes available. And the decorations will then be laid out manually like an overlay over the, re uh, uh, over the rest of the scene. And uh, they will change their position whenever something changes, like the visibility of the decorated node could change or the position could change. They could, translations could be happening and all that kind of stuff. And that's the point where we recalculate the new required position of the, uh, of the, of the, um, of the nodes that are on the graphic decoration stack plane that lay on top of it. So to the point, uh, uh, up to now, I don't have any, um, uh, I haven't heard of any issues with that, but that's probably because Dirk did not use it yet. So uh, I'm looking forward. And that's uh, also my last slide. How can you use and contribute to validator effects? It's hosted on GitHub. It's open source. You have the Maven coordinates for you to integrate into your Maven or Gradle setup. And uh, I actually use the uh, issue um, tracker from GitHub. So if you have any issues, you can report them there uh, or you can also contact me directly under the email I've given on the slide. I don't know where we are in terms of time. I've tried to be pretty quick. Um, I think you're perfect. Um on time. I okay, mean, oh, great. So I have, I've seen some questions. Tool, tool tips don't work on display controls, do they? Yes, you're right. And there is a workaround that I uh, have not yet open sourced. Um, you have to, to do some tricks to get tool tips on disabled controls. But you can work around this. If there's uh, uh, interest in that, and I could maybe uh, um, write another little um, library that, that shows how to do this. This is like a uh, I call it a disabled tooltip wrapper class where you put the real stuff into the wrapper. The wrapper gets never disabled. It's like a, a container, a, a wee box or something, and you put the real stuff into that and the tooltip is put on the container and the, the button itself can then be disabled within this uh, container and then you can put the tooltip back on. But it's really a new instance that it doesn't work out of the box. And there's another question, support validation fix, also the default Java fix validation annotations as at, at, attribute like not now, maximum, et cetera. I'm not sure if I understand that question. I unmute to explain. At the beginning, you yes. had shown that you um, can, um, can set uh, the validation on the username, I think so. Um, yes, was it? Uh, this was a minimal example like this. Yes, yes. So what when the username has uh, some annotations or? Ah, I see uh, the, the user text field, like this member field could have an annotation, not null, max, min, et cetera. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, there is no support for that. But you're absolutely uh, invited to uh, create an issue 
on the issue tracker of, of GitHub and I can look into this. This looks like an interesting suggestion. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Please go ahead. And have you done any profiling on your controls? Would love to try, but wanted to know a bit about the performance. Uh, my, uh, I don't actually have separate controls. These are the JavaFX controls. Um, there is some performance penalty involved with, with this overlay approach, with the, with the graphic decoration. And of course, each of the graphic uh, uh, nodes is, is one more node in your scene graph. But apart from that, there shouldn't be anything different from a regular off-the-shelf um, uh, JavaFX application. I don't know, can you see this? If I, if I put that here, you can see this application. Yeah. So this is a real world example yeah. of, of, of a user creation mask. There is all those stuff that's required. That's this is yellow triangles. And if I go over the add button, I see why I cannot, this operation cannot be executed and, and stuff like that, that mustn't be empty. So if I enter anything here and, the, and there, and then I do like that. And as soon as that, then the app button gets, if I do this and I get the specified passwords do not match. So this is like the, the real world example for that. But there's uh, basically oh, no, yes. I, I have one more question. One, one of the biggest problems I always had with the validation and controls of X was that it was way too eager. Yeah? So I had like 10 text fields and the user started typing into one and then everything got uh, validated and marked yes. in red. But I don't want that. I want the OK button to be enabled until the user yeah. clicks on it, and then validation runs, and then the UI says no, you cannot continue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, that was the, we had some serious discussion about that as well, mm -hmm. and in our application we absolutely do it like this. So if you enter the 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 form immediately, those yellow triangles glare up because that tells the user where he absolutely has to enter something. But that is a design decision. And as you may know, I'm not the best designer. I'm uh, of the boring business kind mm -hmm. application stuff. And we have our, our style sheets are called Tiroler Graufi and that kind of stuff. You may remember that. Mm -hmm. So there is uh, an easy way to do that with uh, validate the fix. And that is just to leave out the immediate call, this one. So if you do, if, if you do away with this dot immediate call, if you just uh, do nothing after decorate, you, you put your semicolon, then you can call validate or validate at a convenient time. So then your, your sign up button would remain enabled. And when you click it, then you call validate or validate. And if that is not returning, yeah, great. Then you can like, uh, then, then the, the yellow triangles will only clear up then. This is perfectly yeah. possible. Yeah, perfect. So this is a design decision that you have to do. Do you want it immediate or do you want to have a validation at, at the point in time that you as a, as a programmer decide? Right. All right, great. I think we have to uh, move on to the yeah, next great. presentation. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Thank you for presenting. <laughs>